easy mind, easy life. I don't know why I thought I had it upside down. <laughs> okay, now in this video, I wanted to talk about um, the process I use for clearing out the stones when I have gallstones in my system. I mentioned it a couple of times and I didn't think it was important, but I thought today maybe there are other people interested, you know, that have gallbladder problems and that may want to try, you know, because it's, um, it's completely safe. It's not something that will hurt you. Um, there is a website called The Cultured Palette that I also found it on when I looked up how to remove gallstones naturally. Um, she walks you through the whole process. It's really wonderful. And she shows you what the stones look like. And mine look exactly like the cholesterol ones when they come out. But um, she talks you through the whole process of how it's safe. You know, there's nothing to worry about. If it's something that you feel sluggish, you feel your body needs a cleanse, the liver needs a break. Um, it's very easy to do. The simple and short version of it is use half a cup of lemon juice and use half a cup of olive oil you mix them up in a glass together the lemon juice and the olive oil and then you drink it really quickly do not stop to taste it because it's just so foul but <laughs> just chug it down once you've done that make sure it's the last thing you do at night because you want to lie down straight after and once it's down you want to lie down on your right side because you want all of that sitting on the side of the liver the gallbladder all of that side so you want to sit that way and you try and lie there for at least an hour or two before turning over let that really work that side of your body and then see how you go um, they start to come out the next day now that was all my naturopath gave me at the time and at the time i didn't release very many with the cultured palette website what i found was um, she adds an Epsom salt drink before that mix. So it's a tablespoon of Epsom salt, okay, in a glass of water. You stir it, stir it, stir it. I think you need warm water because the cold water doesn't dissolve it very well. So use warm water, I find is always better. Mix that well and drink that. Okay, wait a couple of hours after you've had the Epsom salt. That actually helps to flush it all out. So uh, I find that's more effective than just drinking the olive oil with the lemon juice. But either way, with or without, it still works, okay? Uh, it's the olive oil and the lemon juice that cleanse. That's the most important step. So, and I think lying on that right side, just letting it all sit in that area, trying to clean it all out, you'll find the next day the stones will come out. So um, that, I've been waiting and waiting since I got my first attack this time to do that cleanse. But with the cultured palate, she talks you through doing two weeks with apple juice because she thinks, or she says, that the apple juice softens the stones, right? But the problem I had this time was in those two weeks that I was trying to do the apple juice, my stomach would not accept anything it just kept rejecting everything and throwing it all back out so even the apple juice was none it was just making me throw it all up and giving me horrible acid so after the first week it didn't occur to me actually at the time um, when I had the first attack this time and I went to the hospital and I came out I've got tons and tons of apple juice now in the cupboard because <laughs> I was getting ready to do the two weeks and um then it was like oh i can't drink apple juice and it didn't occur to me somewhere in the middle of that to do just the olive oil and the lemon juice and clear all the stones i just thought oh no i need the apple juice i just had it in my head i needed the apple juice um but you know things happen for a reason because i found in those two weeks i really started to learn to listen to my body to what it liked having in there and what it didn't like having in there you know and now I know that yes occasionally I can have something heavy like a pizza you know or have the occasional ice cream but it doesn't need to be something that's like on my list every week you know or, um, I think it's more enjoyable to have it when it's not that often you know and then you have it as oh wow you know you get get to really experience it so uh, yeah it's been um, it's been quite lovely having this communication now with my body and so 
again with this video i encourage you to sit with your body and play the game ask it you know every time you're going to eat something think to yourself why am i eating this you know um why am i eating this is this too is this comfort food you know is this making me feel good temporarily but in the long run no <laughs> you know it's not making me feel that great um is it robbing you of energy you know the food that makes you feel sluggish because it's so heavy in your system all of that um and i find for me the most important thing is what are your thoughts about the food that's going in you know if you have negative thoughts about the food that it's making you fat that it's making you heavy that it's making you um it's draining your energy, like it's making you feel tired. You have all these thoughts. No matter what you eat, if they're the predominant thoughts, your body is listening to that and it is responding to that. You know, some people can eat no matter what amount of junk food and it has no effect on their body and they don't put on any weight and they don't even exercise, right? How do you even explain that? Because for me, I imagine every time they eat something, they really enjoy eating it. They don't put any thought into the effect it's going to have on their body. They're just like, yum, I really want to eat this. And that's it. That's as simple as it is. I really want to enjoy this, you know. Now, if, if, okay, you can't trick the intelligence, okay? You can't say, oh, yum, I'm going to eat this and try not to have any other thoughts because in your subconscious, there's already a pattern that's been established, right? With food. You already have a pattern going on that you need to resolve for yourself, right? So you really need to look at the conversation in your head going on about the food that's going in. Um, a good idea is to see why this pattern even exists. Where did it come from? You know, is it something you picked up from a parent? You know, for me, it was definitely picked up from my mum. You know, her eating habits and her lifestyle with food and her body. I took all of that on, even though my physically I'm different. My body's completely different to hers. I'm more on my dad's side, who's always been quite slim. So... I don't know why, but I took on her beliefs about food, beliefs about the body, all of the judgments. I took all of that on into my life. And here we are. So the most important thing is if you can understand why you have these thoughts, that's great because then you can let that go. It's like, oh, I can't release that now. I don't need it anymore. I know why I have that. Right? I've just taken it on. It's not even mine. So much of the stuff that we do every day, the thoughts, the actions, the words that come out of our mouths are not even ours. <laughs> They're not even ours. It's just stuff that's been repeated and repeated and repeated to us as children. We've heard it so many times that it's become our language. It's become our words, our beliefs, our thoughts. But when you come into the world, you are just love and light. You have no thoughts. You have no judgments. Judgments are something you learn. So if you can really get that into your head, that judgment is something you learn, then you can also understand that judgment is something you can unlearn. Because you didn't come with it. You weren't born with judgment. That is something that is passed on to you. So every judgment you have about food, every judgment you have about your body is affecting. It's causing discomfort, disease, pain, whatever it is that's going on in your body right now. It's all stemming from that. Your relationship, your thoughts about your food that you put in and your relationship and your thoughts about your body. Have you ever been able to look at your body, honestly, with your hand on your heart? Have you ever been able to look at your body and say you love your body just as it is, without changing it, just as it is? I know people that are super fit that still don't think their body's good. You know, it doesn't look good. And I look at them and I think, wow, you look amazing. And they don't even realize they look amazing. You know? 
So it's not even just for people that are overweight, it's even people that are super fit. It's a mindset. It's a judgment. It's something that we've learned somewhere along the line to not love our bodies, you know? So today, I, you know, I'd really like you to sit with that. Sit with the judgments you have about food. What do you think of when you're putting the food in? Think, you know, sit with the judgments you have about your body. And then think, what is stopping me from loving my body just as it is in this moment without it having to change at all? What is stopping me? And you'll realize judgment. Always, it's always judgment because you believe it needs to look different. You believe it needs to work better, function better. You believe all these things about your body. What if it's perfect just as it is? If you take judgments away, it's perfect just as it is. It's doing its job, the heart is beating, the stomach is digesting the food. You're still alive, the breath goes in and the breath goes out. It's doing its job. Your body is a vessel. I think the problem for so many people is that we identify that we are this body. This is who we are, but it's not. It's like identifying with my car. I have a, a Nissan X-Trail. It's like saying, I am my car every time my car breaks down or, you know, I get a flat tire or something happens with my car. It's the same thing. I move around in my car, I get from one place to another. So my car's just out the window. <laughs> but I'm not my car. I just use it to get around. Your body's the same. You use it to get around in this place called Earth. So sit with your beautiful body today. Sit with yourself. See if you can start there with your actual self and see if you can actually love everything about you first. Because when you start to love everything about you is when your heart opens up to being able to love everything else, including your beautiful body. So start with you. All right, my darlings? I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the messages. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.